One of the biggest investigations in NCAA history involved payments made to the University of Michigan's Fab Five basketball players by Booster Ed Martin in the 1990s. Now a new book titled The Booster reveals new details about the college scandal and chronicles Martin's life as a supporter of many basketball players. The book's author is my guest today. He is also Ed Martin's son, Carl. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm somebody who went to the University of Michigan in the Fab Five era. They were okay. freshmen when I was a senior. Uh, so I remember the craziness uh, that attended yes. their arrival on campus. I remember the craziness of that year yes. uh, once they started to play uh, and then the next few years as they hung around. And yes. I can probably tell you the first time I heard the name Ed Martin okay. uh, and, and how different uh, the, 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 the trajectory of that story was yes. uh, after that. Uh, yeah. Tell me why it's important for you to tell the story of your father now? Well, now is the time because it's been a labor of love for many years to produce this document mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's ready. Uh -huh. But um, there was a catalyst uh, for the book uh, many years ago uh, in 2003, uh, which is the year my father passed. My mo mother also passed. Mm -hmm. But be prior to her uh, passing, she called me to her bedside, which was a, a strange thing, but and then she requested that I tell the full story, and good, bad, and otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, not to clear his name, but to allow people to know his name and what it really represented. Yeah, yes. and, and uh, the book makes it clear that you feel like he has been badly misrepresented mm -hmm. uh, in terms of his role in all yes. of this, and, and more generally, the kind of person he was. Yes, and so when you don't know the motivation of a person, yeah. sometimes what you see can be distorted by your one's personal views. Mm -hmm. um, Ed Martin, my father, was a person who cared a lot about uh, his community, and he cared deeply about young people and their plight. Mm -hmm. He understood that growing up in Jim Crow South, that there were, um, uh, uh, a lot of uh, pressures and lack of opportunity mm -hmm. um, that he experienced. So being in the North at this time, he wanted to provide a smoother pathway to the successes of life that could be offered to someone who matric matriculated correctly in school. Yeah. And in his ca this case, had a good academic and athletic career. They both were important to Ed. Yeah, I mean, and that was the attraction for him. Uh, not just to the Fab Five, yes. but to the many other uh, young people that he that he tried to help out. Yes, and, and you know, ironically, maybe there's a handful of the uh, kids that he helped that became, let's say, pro athletes. Mm -hmm. um, there are probably a couple dozen that were great in college, but there were, you know, over a few hundred that he assisted with that he just created a better atmosphere for them to live in, to grow in to mature in and become the best people they could be. Mm -hmm. uh, in the story of the scandal that unfolds around the Fab Five, uh, he's painted as a, essentially a payoff guy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody who is uh, giving illicit payments mm -hmm. uh, uh, to the players. Mm -hmm. uh, you cast that in a little bit of a different light as well. Yes, you know, one thing I focus on in the booster is where the money came from. Mm -hmm. And I will uh, admit that it came from illicit means uh, through a numbers operation. Mm -hmm. uh, I not do, uncommon. Not, uh, certainly not. In Detroit or yes. in African American. I mean, right. you think about the history of, of money making in the African American yes. community, you always, everyone knows what the numbers are. Exactly, and yeah. the three and four digits are, are probably played, and I will say book uh, in greater volumes by the state now than anybody in the <laughs> oh, street. Right, you know? right. So, I mean, the, the act wasn't so egregious, uh, but a actually um, those funds enabled Ed to give the support that he wanted to lend to uh, programs as well as uh, athletes, as well as non-athletes and uh, people just in the community. So he was quite generous, mm -hmm. and that generosity spanned um, all the people that he encountered. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I also feel like uh, in the book you're you're a little uh, a little uh, irritated or angered with the Fab Five and the role that they played in the in the telling of the story. Uh, once all this happened, you feel like they didn't come forward and and sort of um, well tell the truth yeah. about what happened. Well, you know, and I'm going to. Uh, 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 
single out um, one of the Fab Five. I feel like Chris Webber was the worst of them. He was the worst because no one else took a podium and declared that Ed Martin preyed on kids and, and loved them and then uh, in turn wanted to trade that love in for financial gain, which was absolutely untrue. You know, it's one thing to not lend support, but it's another thing to uh, determine that you're going to tell untruths about a situation, which you, which you clearly knew. Well, why do you think Chris Webber did that? Why did, he, why did he say what he did about your father? You know, it would probably take a, a psychological examination of 12 months to figure that out. But I will say that I think that sometimes people want to run away from situations that they're not necessarily proud of and that they don't want repeated in their current situation. You know, you become a millionaire and you forget that you ever didn't have money. You, you forget uh, the people that help you get there out of convenience and out of the, the fact that you don't want to relive those moments. But uh, other than that, I really don't understand why he did it because he could have experienced that uh, the uh, levity that success brought him mm -hmm. without trying to um, um, demean someone else, in this case, Ed. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, I think it's reasonable as an outside observer to look at this and say, well, was it really possible that he didn't expect something back from all of these young men that he was was helping? How do you how do you sort of answer that? And I think that's the great question. And the answer to it is Ed was generous and he gave generously to many people. But there were certain individuals in his circle, certain players that came to him and asked for additional help. Mm -hmm. That's help pass his normal generosity. <laughs> and when they made that uh, request and he answered with a yes, they also had a uh, um, agreement to repay that additional support at least. So that's where the payment repayment comes in. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, you know, Jalen Rose remits and he did receive money, but he didn't ask for that additional support. So the responsibility to repay doesn't rest on his shoulders like it does a Chris Webber, you know. Because he took more. He took more. He asked for that additional uh, money, and I was there when he said what he would do, which was to pay it back. Hey, Ed, you know I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a success, and when I do, I'm going to really, I'm going to pay back everything and really take care of you. Yeah, yeah. So that was his motivation for that additional success. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, giving. Yeah. You know, uh, th there's a conversation now uh, going on about the nature of college sports, mm. uh, the role that money plays in it, and the the, the fact that players don't benefit still. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, today, even with all the changes, I mean, you think of how much bigger sports is now than it was uh, in the early 90s yes. with the Fab Five and the players still get nothing. You know, I wonder what someone like Ed Martin might have made of, of that. You know, one thing he knew was that the athletes make a sacrifice, even though they're getting a scholarship sure. to attend the school, they yeah. make a sacrifice to attend the university. For example, um, if a a uh, rookie NBA player gets the minimum salary, he's going to get in excess of $800,000. Right. Uh, in football, a rookie is in excess of $400,000. Mm -hmm. Well, if they forego uh, the professional side of their career for a year or two, they're sacrificing that salary. That money. And then the benefit of their uh, athleticism is, is thrust upon these universities who then make a lot more than that sure. for their skills being utilized uh, under the banner of whichever university or college they're attending. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got about a minute left. I, I wonder if you've heard from any of the Fab Fives uh, about the book. Um, uh, Jalen texts uh, back and forth with me the first time the Free, Par Free Press had excerpts uh, that yes. Sunday. Uh -huh. And um, I speak with Jimmy King fairly regularly. He um, was my favorite. I you, loved Jimmy You know King. what? He has a great uh, aura about yeah, him. Yeah. Jimmy King is a very good guy, and uh, I appreciate him. And he helped me with this uh, project, the booster, yeah. the most of any Fab Fiver. So, yeah, yes. yeah. Jimmy uh, King would play defense no matter what else was going no on what. on the floor, right? And yeah. He'll tell you today, and I did it for the team. Yeah. He said, you know, I, I wanted to win yeah. for us all. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, congratulations on the book. Thank you. And I appreciate you having me. Yes. Okay.